What are some of the different types of record deals? Well, right now I can speak for us. We have all different types of record deals. And I love that one of the things that I share with artists and their managers and their attorneys that if we can really think through something creative, we can pretty much do it in this point in time. I mean, there was a time that we didn't really offer singles deals, but you can do a singles deal. You can do a full artist deal. We can do distribution deals where we're more like joint venture partnership kind of deals. So there are all different ways without going down too far of a rabbit hole. There are a lot of different ways to become business partners and create partnership. And it really, again, just boils down to what the artist knows that they need or what we think value-wise that we can bring to that artist that serves everyone's ultimate goal. And that's to make money off the products and the art and the music that's been created. A 360 deal, if you know the term 360, just means all-encompassing. And an easy way to think about that now would be all the different parts where revenue can be made from whatever you have to offer and put on the table. So if you have a bucket on the table, however many things you put in that bucket that are connected to you as an artist or your brand that's sellable, and we decide together that we're gonna take profit off of whatever is made, that becomes part of a 360 experience. And, I, and, and now that's such a wide bucket, it's a, it's a larger bucket than ever before, because artists have so many different things that they can bring and put in that bucket that becomes sellable, whether it's on the road during touring, whether it's merchandise such as t-shirts, whether it's sinks from movie placements or anything. So it's all the different parts that make up the life of the artist, including their products that could be sellable and the shared profits of those sales would be part of the 360 outside of only just the recorded music. One of the things I would want people to know, aspiring artists to know, aspiring executives to know, is that oftentimes people look at, you know, what they see online or their imagination tells them that it's always celebratory. And it's not always celebrate. It looks glamorous, but it's a lot of work that goes into what you see. And a lot of times with that hard work and just with the nature of personalities, sometimes before we can get to celebration, a lot of conflict has happened. And I say that in a way that I'm hoping this even sounds positive because there's nothing wrong with conflict. There's nothing wrong with not agreeing. There's nothing wrong with coming to the table for the sake of community and being able to have conversations about what's right, what's wrong, your idea versus someone else's idea. And that won't always be the same. People won't always agree. And in order to keep down frustration, you have to be able to set your expectations properly. And so I think that that would be one of the things that, I, sometimes I even joke with people and tell them that that's really my real job is being a manager of expectation. But the expectation part is on everyone at the table, artists included, managers included, attorneys included, to make sure that it's okay to not agree, but we're gonna agree to disagree or we'll come to some, some common terms, some common place where we finally can at least make some decisions. And the decisions ultimately at every turn, no matter what, where the conversation has led is for the better good of the artist. And I just believe that that's every label Every person connected to the label everywhere is gonna feel that. It might not feel good, but I promise you that they're working for it, for the good of everything that you're creating. I think the biggest advice I would give to new artists is to be yourself. It's so easy to emulate, and it's, and it's okay to have, to be a fan of other artists and to take on something that, you know, we can hear some influence. But influence is one thing, full imitation is something else. And I would say, stay clear of trying to imitate a sound that you think is likable or something that you've even admired or that you think is sellable. I would much rather have your authentic self, your genuine, the genuine artist that you are, the genuine real personality of who you are and your life experiences and what they've been and let's try to make sure that your art is reflective of that. We'll work hard to find the audience for who you really are as opposed to who you want us to believe you are.